With passion and purpose, Kanda Chocolates imports fine bean to bar products from Ghana. Let's more hear of your story, Karen. Welcome. Welcome, thank you so much, Priyanka. So if you love chocolate like I do, and this is actually a slide of chocolate drizzling just to get your mouth drooling, go to the next slide, please. Then you'll want to love on the humans who actually help to bring it to us, right? So we're not just loving the chocolate, but we wanna make sure that we love those that bring it to us. And that's all the cocoa farmers, the people that are making it, everyone throughout the entire process. Next slide, please. So Ghana wants to be a beneficiary of that love that I talked about. And you've heard from Ghana's president, Nana Kufo Otto, and he's actually said to Switzerland, we're no longer going to provide you with cocoa beans. And that's huge. He said, we don't wanna be victims. We don't wanna be economic pawns and we are beyond aid. He said he wanted to be in beneficiaries of the work they've done and they want to become self-reliant in their progress. Next slide. So here's how I fell in love with Ghanaian chocolate and how we got here. First, I did a DNA test. Me and my parents were really big into ancestry. I discovered that I had 11% of my DNA comes from Ghana. And so I took a trip to Ghana with friends. I had an opportunity to taste the Ghanaian chocolate and I fell in love. I was like, this is how chocolate should taste. It was creamier and more food forward than any other chocolate I had ever tasted. But I wasn't sold that I had to go into business. It was the trip that I took to, to Cape Castle to the Slave Coast Castle, to the door of no return, that was transformational for me. And if you haven't been there, you should. But that being said, it led me to say, I want to do more with connecting with my roots. I want to do more with Ghana. But as the president of Ghana said, I didn't want it to be charity. So I came back first and said, am I crazy? I scoured the shelves, lots of chocolate on the shelves. Why would we want more chocolate? But I talked to buyers and they said, hey, we cannot, and this is pre-COVID, we cannot keep chocolate on the shelves. People want chocolate. I looked at the numbers and the numbers said the chocolate business is booming all the way up into 2024. So I said, I'm gonna start Ganda Chocolates, but it has to be something done with purpose. Next slide. And so how the love for Canada fuels the progress and how we actually connect and how we're actually doing purpose is we pay our, for our cocoa farmers a fair wage, that's to begin with, and then we increase the export of finished chocolate. This is important. Our chocolate is made in Ghana. That's the biggest difference between us and many others. And so being made in Ghana, we are, we are allowed to increase the export of finished chocolate versus just cocoa beans. Right now, that number is less than 1%. We're also able to protect jobs, whether that's the cocoa farmers, which make up 800,000 farmers in Ghana alone, or we're actually talking about the actual people that make the chocolate within the manufacturing process. And then we also contribute to paying off the debts after colonialism. It's a long, complicated story. I'm sure you've heard of it, but this allows us and allows Ghana to contribute our funds that we're doing on finished chocolate versus cocoa to help pay down those debts. Yeah. Next slide. So how's it going with Canada Chocolates? Our mission began in 2018 when we took our trip to Ghana. We had product development, and as you all know, it takes a long time to go through with FDA and nutritional labeling. But by the, time, by the time we got to the end of 2019, we had our certifications and we were ready to launch. But this was just before COVID hit. So when COVID hit, we knew we had to pivot and partner. And so we, so we leaned on our relationships with customers and e-commerce. We, we finally gained tailwinds and growth. We got on Amazon, anywhere where someone would ship us to a customer that they could go online and order from their home. We partnered with Uncle Nearest to do events, chocolate and whiskey and wine events. And then we, in 2021, we actually expanded and actually launched our chocolate minis where you can get a little bite of chocolate. We expanded into different online retailers and we continue to see a lot of growth. Next slide. And so here's how we spread the love. We're made in Ghana, as I shared. We're fair trade, we're non-GMO, and 10% does go back to a charity. It's actually here in Los Angeles, the Social Justice Learning Institute. We have three flavors right now and expanding. We have extra dark, dark, and milk chocolate. The dark chocolate is our converter, and it comes in bars and we have minis. But the dark chocolate is what says to somebody that doesn't like dark chocolate, hmm, I think I like dark chocolate. Next slide. So who loves Kanda? Adam Glassman, he's a creative director for Oprah Magazine. He loves Kanda. He's posted about us twice. He's included us in his gift guide, Kiki Palmer, ABC7 News. We've been featured in Vanity Fair Magazine. Janelle Monet loves our chocolate. That's her featured on the bottom. And then you also have Diane von Furstenberg. Next slide, please. 
And our partners love us. Amazon, Intuit, QuickBooks, Angels Envy, The Goods Mart, and Uncle Nearest. Next slide, please. And so we have new flavors coming out and new packaging. We're gonna be launching the lemon with the dark chocolate. Next slide, please. And I'll leave you with the last two slides as we're closing up that I'm a biology major. I have went to become a laboratory science investigator. I went and got my MBA. I became a healthcare leader. And then I recently became a founder and I've always been a social activist. Last slide, next slide. And so we're looking for $750,000 in investment for our inventory marketing and to hire amazing humans. Last slide, please. Thank you. Will you love Canda chocolates and a love on the farmers and the people that go into making it? Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Such a delicious presentation, I must say. Um, Trevor, would you like to start with feedback for Karen? Yeah, sure, Karen. I, I love the approach that you all are taking, specifically sort of this justice approach, looking at not just what resonated with me is that you were saying it was being at the, the Cape Coast Slave Castles and realizing that that then drives a lot of the vision for the justice piece here. And so I think that that is, is really compelling and to then do it through chocolate, which I think is also, you know, has unto itself a lot of symbolism and sort of, you know, pushing this product around the world. Um, and so I guess uh, some of the questions that I have is, are you all focused primarily on the bites and, and the bars or are there other ways in which you're looking at um, sort of extending the, the chocolate product or the derivatives um, into other markets as a way to grow the business? We have been getting that question. And so we are looking, I mean, as we grow and as we have the finances to do so, we're looking at people that want to just buy the pure cocoa, cocoa nibs, what about cocoa butter? So all those things are an opportunity because they're a byproduct of the process and it's really just growing the business to get there. I mean, there's, there is a world of opportunity and definitely there are customers that are asking about it. So um, it's something we'd love to do. Got it. And, and then how is the business received in Ghana? Do you all um, it, does the product itself have a presence in Ghana and what is that like? And are you able to leverage that um, to, you know, garner other successes here in the States and elsewhere? So the chocolate itself has, it's, a, it's, it's a, under, under a different name, but yes, it is in Ghana. And the people that are there love it. They actually eat a different version of it, meaning they, uh, in Ghana, they like fruit in their chocolate. And so that's a big deal. And so the chocolate flavors are actually different, which is why in the United States, we want to bring the lemon over and try to start blending what's preferred in Ghana with what's preferred in the United States. But the feedback of being able to have a finished chocolate bar and being able to say this came from, you know, my relative or someone down the way, that has actually been huge. And so that's actually part of it. Many farmers have not actually tasted finished cocoa or finished chocolate so it's actually a thing um but we actually do have it on the ground in ghana and there's been a great response to it that's great i i think you could definitely leverage those stories to further you know the brand appeal overall i'll, I'll pass it off to Kristen if she has any questions um well one i'm just curious about um well so i actually love fruit in my chocolate too i don't i feel like that's like a winner right there so i was like thrilled to know that yeah and then just um you know I guess we keep hearing about this chocolate shortage and is that a way, can that work to your advantage or, or will that be part of your business model that's a problem? It is not a problem. So it actually, it's, 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 it's almost insane to me, short story, that when I started this, I said, I don't want to do charity. I had all these things that I wanted to do, but I was very careful about protecting Ghana. Fast forward to the past year, you know, Ghana and the West Coast has said, hey, I don't want your charity, and I'm cutting off Switzerland, and I'm mad at the big retailers, right, that, that manufacture chocolate. They want their piece of the pie. I think we saw that in earlier presentations. And so right now, I'm in a perfect place because my chocolate is being made in Ghana by someone who is Ghanaian, and so we are partnered, and so that, that actually changes the entire game. So there's not a shortage. Um, it's just a matter of, are you going to have access to those cocoa beans if you don't want to pay the price, if you don't want to give them a piece of the pie? Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Kristen and Trevor. This is 